And welcome to another edition of Defo on 5. Jeff DeForest and Mike Luby Lubitz. And all you can say after that past weekend, ladies and gentlemen, is this wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. No, it wasn't. How are you, Mike Luby Lubitz? I thought it was a very, very triumphant weekend, not only for the local teams, but uh, the Kentucky Derby turned out to be a blast and very profitable for, it seems like, many of the people that are in our small degenerate cult that follows such things. Uh, a lot of people cashed in on the uh, Kentucky Derby. We'll get to that. But um, first of all, how are you? How was your weekend? Uh, what kind of uh, psychotic levels did you reach during the viewing of any of the games this past weekend? Uh, I'm well. The games actually didn't really uh, call for psychosis, but I was just waiting for the other shoe to drop the entire heat game, and it never did. I mean, the Knicks got within, I guess, 13, but that was really as close as it got. He really coasted in that game and didn't even play that well, to be brutally honest. The Panthers game was great. I, I, the fact that they found a way to win that game, I, I, I am floored by that team right now. And the Derby ended up being great. Our, our buddy, the Pauling man, who if you caught his picks on our morning show, uh, hit out the park. I mean, all of his horses were in there for the most part, and two of the horses out of the four he liked finished in the top three. So it, it was a really fun sporting weekend. How was your Derby and how was your sports weekend? Uh, Derby was very profitable. We'll get to that. Uh, but um, as I said, th this wasn't supposed to happen with the uh, Florida Panthers, the most recent of the developments. Uh, the uh, Knicks uh, appear to be dead meat, don't they? I mean, uh, they might have been at too many of those uh, pre-Formula One Grand Prix parties uh, before they hit the court. Uh, they looked dead in the water against the Miami Heat, who did breeze uh, in, in a poor shooting performance. And uh, yet they seem to uh, never really be threatened in, in that ball game. I'm sure... The uh, Five Reasons Sports Network people will be all over that, including Scoop Skolnick traveling back and forth of uh, Miami to uh, Madison Square Garden. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they heat with an excellent chance now to, uh, well, I mean, it's a pivotal game four uh, coming up uh, once again in the uh, Heat Knicks playoff series. And, and uh, the other two teams are beating the living daylights out of each other, uh, as are the Heat and the Knicks. I mean, uh, it was very reminiscent of uh, old time, uh, old school Heat Knicks 1997 through 2000 where you expect the usual brawl to break out, and sure enough, it did, involving Cody Zeller, of all people, getting into a little shoving match. There was also an interesting shove in the NBA as Nikola Jokic shoved the owner of the Phoenix Suns, not knowing uh, who he was, uh, this guy named uh, Ishbar or something like that. Uh, but whatever his name is, uh, he bought the team for like $80 million yeah, when just... uh, the uh, previous uh, Phoenix Suns owner turned out to be uh, like a serial uh, racist misogynistic, uh, homophobic, uh, uh, whatever. And uh, I don't know. What what was it that he did? Uh, he, he was involved in all kinds of crap. Sarver sucks. Sarver just was a scumbag. No, no, nobody really cared for this Basically. gentleman. But uh, somehow, like Donald Sterling, he was in the league until, I suppose he's about to become an embarrassment. Yep. So um, anyway, yeah, the loose ball goes uh, into the crowd there. Uh, and uh, the owner of the Suns kind of grabs the ball, and, and Jokic tries to take it away from him. And, and he shoves the guy. And in true NBA tradition, the owner of the Suns flops back into the chair <laughs> and gets a technical on Jokic in what could have been a key point in a very close game that uh, wasn't decided until late uh, in the contest. And then once again, uh, Mike Luby Lubitz, it's unfortunate, but I have to remind you, what the hell was Pat Riley thinking when he took Justice Winslow? You know, With guy, Devin Booker on the board, think about what a radical uh, difference that would have made in the franchise's history. We might not even be seeing this particular Heat team if the Heat had drafted Devin Booker, but uh, he is lighting it up. And uh, between Devin Booker and Jimmy Butler, Booker right now looking even more spectacular than Butler. Uh, those two are, are really uh, the uh, two highlighted players, uh, the two best players so far uh, in the NBA postseason. But but this wasn't supposed to happen with the Florida Panthers, uh, Mike Louie Lubitz. An impossible story. Last year, the President's Trophy, uh, they're their best team in uh, the NHL during a regular season. Uh, hopes are high. They, they uh, kind of flounder their way and uh, just uh, re really, uh, you know, uh, lucky to get through that series against the Washington Capitals in six games. And they get swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning. And uh, your, your rhetoric is, uh, well, geez, you know what? Uh, you know, the Lightning are tough, two-time defending champions. And uh, the usual degenerate rhetoric was occurring at, at the end of this season, was it not? Eh, what's the difference if you make the playoffs, you know? You'd be better off in the lottery. We heard that with the Heat as well. And uh, we, we see uh, just how useless that argument is, as uh, both of these teams are now prospering in, in the second round. And uh, in the case of the Cats, 
Wow. I mean, uh, who, who uh, Edmonton uh, is 1 1 with Vegas, and uh, they, they appear to be the biggest danger uh, coming out of the West. The uh, Stars are down 2 1 to the Kraken. They, they were the other team that a lot of the wise guys like going in, coming out of the Western Conference. And, and now Carolina gets shellacked by the New Jersey Devils after going up 2 0. So with a 3 0 advantage, in this uh, current series, uh, the uh, Panthers uh, over the Toronto Maple Leafs, which uh, the other thing that's weird, uh, all of the experts, Luby, uh, is this starting to get annoying? A- and and even uh, the betting sites themselves, they're offering in-game odds, and, and the Panthers are never favored. That They've been <laughs> underdogs in all three games, including the game on their home ice. Uh, after uh, winning the first two in Toronto, they were underdogs going into this game yesterday. And then going into the third period, you had to lay 120 to win 100 on the Toronto Maple Leafs while laying 110 to win 100 on the Florida Panthers. Uh, they were even accorded uh, uh, underdog status on their home ice when, when battling back from two different one-goal deficits in a game where uh, the goalie for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Samsonoff, got knocked out. <laughs> now, the other guy kept them in that game in the third it, period. I mean, he, he was amazing. What was his Wall? Wall played well. I wow. Can't. I, I really mean, well. after uh, giving up a couple of goals in the second period, th- this guy was fantastic. But so far, the story of the playoffs is Sergey Bobrovsky. Yes, he's uh, opened my eyes. I can't really hate him as much as I used to hate him. That's the appropriate sound effect, yeah. <laughs> Sergey Bobrovsky, wow. I mean, everybody it's so great when everybody is dead wrong. And, and like I said, the analysts, uh, even on uh, TBS, which uh, they don't really do much to identify who the crew is. So if you missed it at the very beginning, you have no idea who they are. And then the graphic comes up so quickly, you're thinking, who is that? Is that Chris Chelios? I don't know. Who the hell is that? There's one guy that's very sure of himself, uh, and I, I've been trying to catch his name, and I haven't been able to. And he, he constantly, he predicted a 5-2 Maple Leafs win last night. Nice. Good friend. And it is constantly all over the Maple Every Everything like this team, uh, you know, by uh, like uh, some kind of divine right. Uh, should be winning this series and going on and finally getting off to Schneider from winning Stanley Cups, which they haven't won since 1936, I think was their last one. When was it? I, I don't know. It was pre-World War I, I think, uh, NHL. It was like 67 or 68. Like I said, holy Andy Pathgate, man. I mean, uh, this team has been in a drought, the likes of which, well, I mean, they, the only people that are more familiar with that uh, are, are sort of familiar with that are Dolphin fans, right? I was going to say, we're, we're used to that in one sport down here. Where, where everybody thinks every year this is going to be the year, where everybody thinks that the change of direction, that uh, the uh, new philosophy of the front office is going to lead to uh, greatness. And uh, yet, I mean, nobody can believe this, that the Panthers uh, are uh, a really good team at this point. And uh, finding a way to uh, grind things out and grit things out and uh, with the goaltending they're getting from Bobrowski. <laughs> How about that for a statement, Luby? With the goal, I mean, if you had to complete this sentence, with the goaltending they're getting from Bobrowski, they're lucky right? playoffs is what I would say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could finish in a variety of fashions. Nobody would give a rat's ass about the Florida Panthers. The Florida Panthers should be uh, contracted from the league. That's the kind of way you would finish off that sentence. Not like with the goaltending they're getting from Bobrowski. They have a legitimate shot to go all the way, Luby. There, I said it. Legitimate shot to go all the way. <laughs> Try and slip that in there so that people don't really catch. I, did you just say that, Defo? Oh, my God. I mean, it's wide open, all right? It's crazy. But it does look like uh, they, I mean, I would have to say the odds are very favorable of them getting through the second round. In which case, they probably catch the Carolina Hurricanes, who are a really good team. And, you know, I mean, uh, are are they that much worse? Uh, The Hurricanes just gave up eight goals yesterday to New Jersey, who they had by the juggler. Down to nothing in the series. Went back to New Jersey, and they got shellacked. So, uh, Florida Panthers, uh, really a, a Cinderella story. And a French Joe Philbin, that, that couldn't have been a worse characterization. Yeah, he, he ain't Joe oh. <laughs> he's, he's, This guy he's, is the shit. I mean, he really is. Yeah, he's great. At Paul Marie Chevalier. Yeah. We, we, we made fun of him all season long. We, we thought this guy was uh, leading the team to as flat a year as you could possibly. I mean, uh, this, this was Christopher Columbus time. No, it ain't flat. What are you talking about? <laughs> Flat. That, that's how dead the uh, Panthers were under Paul Maurice. And uh, I, I couldn't believe that the guy has been uh, coaching as long as he has. He's been a head coach for like 25 years. Is that yes. right, Lumi? Yes. 25 yes. years as a head coach. I never even heard of the guy before. <laughs> Probably because he was, uh, you know, in that uh, hockey outpost of Winnipeg. 
Yeah. Where, you know, not even the people of Winnipeg even care about that. Uh, you know, I mean, here are uh, diehard Canadian citizens, the ones that weren't allowed into the arena last night, which uh, that, that worked, by the way. I think it did. That, that hideous say, policy. Well, Toronto fans. So I don't know if it was a policy or like we thought eventually Panther fans would get there. Uh, but there was barely any Toronto fans. It was Nothing. Not yeah. a Toronto fest. And the same thing with the Knicks. Like all these, like they try to, look, you can say that with the Dolphins, Jets games and the uh, Marlins games. Every Marlins game is more fan. Like that's not. Oh, Yankees, game. Mets they against the Marlins. Sure. Like three or four straight years, maybe even more. Like it's a heat arena and it was a very heat intensive crowd. So uh, I, I don't know. Like Knicks fans are like, well, uh, Garden South. I'm like, no, no, it's the opposite because I heard let's go heat ch chance all throughout the fucking garden in uh, game. What was it? Game two. Game two. Yeah. Game two it was a lot of let's go heat chance. So, uh, and, and game one, especially when the heat won. So no, I, and I heard nothing Knicks down here. So these are the two teams that we support decent. Like the Panther fans are in abundance, but they get at least a little group. It's not the freaking Marlins. So, uh, well, in that Bruins series, uh, it was embarrassing, but uh, you know, was they, they did a good job of weeding out all of the uh, Toronto fans. <laughs> if that was the <laughs> intended Ron DeSantis goal of uh, Doug Seifu <laughs> and the people in the Panthers front office with an outrageous <clears throat> and should have been addressed by the league idea of not allowing anybody that doesn't have a U.S. residency to buy tickets uh, through the team's uh, normal uh, ticket platforms. And, you know, you, you would think, OK, then there'll be a concerted effort by all of these Maple Leaf nuts who, I mean, uh, again, I mean, ju just to be, uh, you know, going away and completely despondent. They had like, uh, what, 20,000 people standing outside the uh, Maple Leaf Arena, you know, cheering and going crazy, uh, you know, from the anthem on. Dueling anthems, too, I mean, is a little bit annoying, is it not? Uh, you know. <laughs> I, I do, I, you know, I mentioned this many times. I mean, I, that was one of the uh, unfortunate negatives of uh, calling boxing and having to sit through like eight anthems at a Don King promoted fight event where, you know, literally, I mean, uh, they, he would go from, uh, you know, the Ukrainian national anthem uh, to, uh, you know, a Polish national anthem. And then the next thing you know, a mariachi band gets up in a ring and you still haven't gotten to the U.S. national anthem, even though fight. <laughs> The fight has taken place at the Garden in New York. Uh, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I, there, there wasn't that much of a rise in the arena. You're right, even during the Canadian National Anthem. Uh, and, and the woman who was doing the uh, singing, who did both again, uh, really did try to sell that O Canada thing. <laughs> Keeps coming back to me. Nobody knows the words after O Canada. I mean, I, I know we've done a bit on that in the past. And, and you had that uh, clip for a long, long time. O Canada. What's the rest of the song? Anybody. I, I defy anybody to tell me what it is. I don't know after the next line. I know the next line. I don't know the rest of it. Mayo sang the whole thing. So I know the next line, yeah. Know. It's fucking cold outside. <laughs> That's it. Bunch of other stuff. The uh, Marlins uh, win in a balk. Uh, balk in the uh, top of what? The 10th inning? Was it uh, 10th, 11th? I'm not sure. Uh, they had lost five in a row. I mean, they'd really uh, fallen off the radar there uh, with, with a series of hideous performances and uh, finally salvaged the game against the Cubs. And, and that was part of a weird day all the way around in Major League Baseball. Garrett Cole, who had been untouchable. I mean, he was all Elliott Ness, Luby. Garrett Cole of the Yankees uh, was 5-0 and with a minuscule uh, earn run average. Uh, hadn't given up a home run in 50-plus innings and had been absolutely dominant. The one bright spot for the Yankees who continue to flounder, even though they're a game above 500, flounder, flounder, Luby, in last place in the American League East with even Brian Cashman coming forward, the general manager who's had, <clears throat> what, about a 25-year free pass with this team? When, when was their last championship? 2012? Was it 12, 11? No, I don't know, it's Shara and A-Rod. Yeah. 2011, 2012? I don't know. It's All right, so, so they've been selling false hope there for a long time and, and doing it in a fashion that uh, really, I mean, uh, take, takes the whole thrill out of the equation of having uh, front office ingenuity when you're just able to buy your way out of uh, a series of hideous mistakes. A and they've done that uh, throughout uh, the last, what, it seems like three decades, yeah. uh, maybe more. And, uh, you know, it, it's not working right now. Because uh, Cashman's got a bunch of stiffs. And, and then you, you get to the same New York wise guys always bring up the same stuff, right? What do you mean we bought our team? There was Pisana, there was Jeter, there was Bernie Williams. Yeah, but they <laughs> haven't won since those teams. Ever since they started buying teams, they haven't won. Nothing, yeah. 
So that, that was interesting. I mean, uh, for him to spit the bit against the Tampa Bay Rays, who have been a sensational story. Pittsburgh Pirates were writing a good story, and they have now lost seven in a row. The Red Sox had won eight in a row. They had lost. Phillies had lost six in a row. And uh, they clashed yesterday again, and uh, the Phillies finally prevailed. So the eight-game streak of the Red Sox was snapped, and the Phillies got off to Schneid after losing six straight. A uh, lot of weird stuff. But, uh, yeah, winning a game on a block, that, that's – I don't know, Louie. I mean, is that like uh, winning a race by disqualification? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, could be. Now, we're going to touch on a derby at greater length on the uh, Defoe show. Yes. Uh, I did end up I, I uh, always within an eyelash of fame. I, I said this many times, uh, and maybe it's inappropriate now, but uh, the Kentucky Derby is equine roulette if you're a better. You're trying to hit numbers. I mean, uh, you know, all of the horses have uh, reasons why you can make a case for them to win. Yep. Almost every one of them, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, seemingly impossible or not, you can listen to some guy's logic and go, all right, makes sense. So uh, here they had only 18 going to the post. I mean, uh, there was a series of, uh, you know, bizarre events, including the death of seven horses at Churchill Downs in the week prior to the Derby and uh, including on Derby Day. That's they right. had to put down a couple of horses in some of the preliminary races. That's a whole long discussion that, that we'll get into also on the uh, Defo show. I don't know that we'll uh, – I, I'm not sure what the answer is because uh, you would have to think if you really wanted to prevent this – you would have to ban the sport, and, and that's not happening, right? I mean, you can make the case that uh, you would have to ban football and all of this other stuff, but uh, as we've uh, you know determined many times, the differential there is these horses aren't deciding on their own that, hey, uh, it's worth it. It's worth the risk. Exactly. <clears throat> they don't have that choice, and so it becomes under the heading of uh, animal cruelty, no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Making, uh, you know, like circus-like use of an animal, uh, you know, to the detriment of the animal's health and well-being. And yet we're talking about animals uh, that uh, they've gone through uh, scientific methods to determine uh, to breed as royally and as regally as they possibly can be and have tremendous investments in these animals and little reason to see them put in peril. But... That's a whole nother discussion. Yet, uh, you did, uh, you mentioned the Pauly man. He gave us Mage, and he gave us, uh, what was it, the 14 horses? Uh, Angel name. of Empire. <laughs> Angel of Empire, yes. <clears throat> I, I, he didn't mention two fills, which a lot of people did. And so uh, I ended up making a uh, five-horse trifecta box with my buddy. Oh, uh, good for you. So we hit that. Uh, but uh, And, and Pauly man liked verifying who finished dead last, but... Uh, and my friend kind of talked me out of uh, using verifying. So we didn't have verifying as part of that box. But had we gone ahead and done the same thing in Superfectas, we had the fourth horse. Had that fourth place horse finished second, we would have uh, picked up uh, probably 15 grand. Uh, had he finished third, we probably would have won another four or 5,000. Uh, because we didn't do it in the Superfecta, we cost ourselves 15,000, which is what that paid. We would have had it. What he should have, could have. But uh, we did score a dime, so that was pretty good. And uh, I think everybody we knew uh, that got involved in the Derby with maybe, I mean, uh, did you not bet enough money in this thing? To, uh, fills, I, I thought we had talked ourselves out of the fills. I thought we didn't understand the fills thing. So I didn't have the fills. I had the three horses uh, Parliament liked, and I had the one horse male liked. And, and three of the four outside of verifying actually ran pretty strong. And then... Uh, Angel of Empire and Mage got split by the Phils, which I, we, I remember on the male uh, ex, uh, extravaganza, we had talked ourselves out of the Phils, so I didn't do anything with the Phils. I forgot I forgot about the two Phils until I was like, what the fuck? Who's the three horse? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. I was like, we would have, we would have had the exact at least. We, didn't, we wouldn't have the trifecta, we would have had the exact, which would have been something. Oh, no, it's always fat. I mean, uh, the biggest payoffs you could possibly get are, are in the Kentucky Derby, way inflated over what they normally would be. So, uh, yeah, that turned out to be very successful. All right, we'll talk about that more on the Defo Show. You can subscribe to South Florida Live and catch that. We always air segments here on Five Reason Sports Network. Uh, a wonderful weekend. And the heat back in action tonight, so I'm sure there'll be a lot of steam on that all throughout the day as well, as the Heat have a chance to uh, literally bury the New York Knicks uh, with a victory on their home wood this evening. For Mike Luby Lubitz, I'm Jeff DeForest. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of TIFO on 5.